about this beautiful location we're in right now. This is the Michigan Street Baptist Church. Right, in the Michigan Street Baptist Church, Reverend J. Edward Nash came here to pastor in 1892. That was 37 years before the birth of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. But in addition to his pastoral duties uh, in the church, he was very involved in the community as a co-founder of the Buffalo Urban League, the Buffalo NAACP, and the Michigan YMCA. He was involved in activities that discuss education opportunities, employment opportunities, political and social issues that affected African Americans uh, back as far as and even before 1892. And you have historical documents that show all of this. One of them specifically you brought with you today. What was that? Well, what I brought today was to show you that in on May 10th, 1910, uh, Reverend Nash invited Booker T. Washington, who was the premier spokesperson for African Americans during his time. He invited him to speak in this church in 1910, and Reverend Nash introduced Booker T. Washington, uh, who was able to speak to African Americans in this community about those issues that Nash was already talking about. The documentation is all related to things that we have at the Nash House Museum, which is located at 36 Nash Street, which was a home of the Reverend J. Edward Nash from 1925 until his death. How important is it to you to have folks immerse themselves in this history, be able to be a part of it, to check it out for themselves? I think it's so important that people know that history didn't start today, <laughs> that it, it goes beyond uh, their time uh, and period. So in order to know where we are to go, first we have to find out where we've been. Lily, you wanted to add to what Sharon was saying yeah. about this church and really how important the church has been to the abolitionist movement and the rich history, we can't say enough, Buffalo has in all of that. Can you go ahead and add to it? Yes, yeah, so the, the church has been standing here since 1849. 80% of the folks who built this church, and I mean literally built it with their own hands, were freedom seekers, formerly enslaved. Mm -hmm. And so we are so fortunate in our community to have this church as a lasting legacy of the work that they did on the pursuit of freedom. Mm -hmm. But the connection I think that the church has really to the work of MLK should be of no surprise because the African American church really in addition to being a place of worship was also the place in which protest movements were launched. And when we go back and look at the history of this church, the first evidence of that we have obviously is the abolitionist movement and the work that the members did to get themselves here to Buffalo to a free state and to a free space, mm -hmm. but also the work they did in welcoming other freedom seekers and in challenging the segregation that they encountered in the city at the time when they were here. Yeah. Um, and so this history of protest, of agitation, uh, fighting for basic human rights is embedded in the church and it's no surprise that we see a leader like MLK come out of the Black Baptist Church because the church has really served as a place to nurture and incubate that drive and that desire. Mm -hmm. And also was a space that African Americans could call their own. Yeah. In the black church, in the Baptist black church, they could really be who they wanted to be. Mm -hmm. They defined for themselves what their existence would be. I mean, so in restoring the church and in sharing the legacy of the men and women that were here that made this place great is really an honor of my life, right? Um, and to also open the doors of the church in honor of MLK on such a holy, special day mm -hmm. is another thing that we're striving to do because this history, this legacy needs to be shared. But even more than that, mm -hmm. we really need to take the lessons of the past and apply them to the present. Yes. Because as a people, we have always, as I said, have come together, defined for ourselves, our own life, our own path. We've protested, we've agitated. From the moment that Africans were brought to this country enslaved, the fight has been on. Mm -hmm. And on MLK Day, I am proud to be a part of that legacy. I am proud to help people draw the connections between what MLK did in the modern 
civil rights movement to what Reverend Nash, Mary Talbert, and others did in the, the, the beginnings of the civil rights movement, the progressive era, era, the fight through the abolitionist movement. All of that connects us. All of that history is embodied in the Michigan Street Baptist Church. And you know so much about this, the corridor itself. If you could just tell people about how easy it is to access this legacy, access this history in this area, because the church is the hub, but there is so much branching out from this area. That's right. Um, and really, um, I, th I think as a, as a community in Buffalo, you know, we, we are the type of people that keep our head down and keep working. And we don't often recognize and understand the treasures we have in our community. Yeah. This past summer, we had visitors from all over the country come here. Um, to explore our spaces, the Nash House, the church, Wolfo Black History Radio Collective, the Colored Musicians Club. And they said that they have traveled to other cities, other places, and they have never come across a community that was fortunate to have these historic spaces right within the same block and in the heart of their city. And so easy to access, yes we are. You can come down on MLK Day, we're all going to be open for free tours. If you want to schedule a tour, you just have to go to the Michigan Street African American Heritage Corridor Commission website and you can set up a tour for yourself. You can get our newsletters, which keeps everyone in the community apprised of all of the events and activities that we're doing. And look out, because Black History Month is right around the corner and we will be doing lots of activities to celebrate and honor and to acknowledge the work African Americans have been doing in this country. But keep in mind, we don't just do that in February, we're doing that all year round. Danny Williams, thank you so much for making time to talk to us. And you specifically wanted to share the legacy that is rich and abounding within the Colored muse uh, Musicians Museum, which is just around the corner from where we are, correct? About 50 yards from here. So when you have to explain to folks really, truly, how much this is a gem in our local community, what do you tell folks? I think that we have a hard time developing philo philosophical ideas that can be related to grassroots ideas. Mm -hmm. When at the, turn, at the turn of the century, we had more than 200 to 300 African-American mus musicians who moved north to join all the electricians, the carpenters, and those folks during the Great Migration. And what they brought with them was not only their art, but their desire to participate in the American way of life. Mm -hmm. And that included grassroots things like being able to participate in banking systems, being able to buy homes, being able to earn a living and support their families. And these things were provided by union people who had the ideas that actually encapsulated Martin Luther King's ideas. I have a dream. And their dream was to come to Buffalo, raise a family, and, and live like a free person. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do here. Uh, the museum itself is 20 years old, and uh, we are open and we talk about these issues, not only the people that came forward, but the ideas that they espoused and how they transmitted those ideas into homes in this very area we're sitting in. Within a one mile radius, 240 members of that union bought homes. They, they built houses, they bought cars, they participated in the American way of life, and that, that's what this is all about. And Dr. King talked about the dream, but we made it happen, we lived the dream. And having the opportunity to share this now, I know people see the talent, that comes through, but why do you think now is a perfect time for people to really immerse themselves in the knowledge and the legacy? If not today, when? I'm tired of being sick and tired. At some point in time, we have to understand that all of these ideals are great, but somebody has to put a shovel in the ground. Somebody has to do some work. And here in the commission, we have four anchors that are actually doing the work. We're teaching folks about our legacy. We're teaching folks about how to translate these ideas into everyday life. And as a matter of fact, our motto at the Colored Musicians Club and Jazz Museum is living the legacy. It's beautiful. Sheila, being able to add your experience as the CEO 
of a black owned, black operated radio station. And this is not the only one that you own in the country, correct? No, I own another one in Atlanta, WIGO 1570 in Atlanta. And it's the same as WFO, it's a legendary heritage station. And knowing that, and being able to add that to this community, being able to let it thrive, so to speak, in a community that already has a beautiful legacy, a long legacy of African American culture and history. What does that mean to you? You know what, it's something fantastic that the Lord chose me to be the one, to be the first African American woman to own a radio station. I started at WUFO in 1986, so the station was already 26 years old, you know, so I already had some great ancestors that I was able to follow behind. Yes, and so when you think about the part that WUFO plays here, what, is, what do you tell people? You know what, we are the outlet for the community where they can come and share their stories. We were able to give them the rich history of its backpacks, giveaways, anything that's going on in the community, they know they can turn to WFO. We are a trusted brand for them, for the community, and we have always been the outlet since 1961. So all we're doing is doing what they already had done mm -hmm. in 61, and we just continue to add to it of what's current for today. And on this MLK Day, a lot has happened. We always say every year that passes, yeah. a lot happens. Still yeah. so much is happening mm -hmm. in the world that makes us, gives us pause and yeah. makes us say, you know, maybe we should be even more vocal than in years past. Yeah. Knowing that, this year, what is the message to our community? We've heard from other folks who said that we need to start speaking out more. Do you believe yeah. that? I do. I believe that each race should be more vocal mm -hmm. of who they are. They should be proud of their race. They can't help that that's the way God made them. And no one should be filled shame on who God made them to be. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to have more round tables where people can be more open to really talk about. And I think once we talk about our race and who we are, people are gonna be so phenomenally surprised on who people are and what they're gonna learn. I love to learn new things, mm -hmm. new people. How you cook this? Oh, well, we cook it this way. How do you do this? You know, I think it would come out to be something really, really wonderful if we um, get out of our own way. Yes, mm -hmm. get out of our own way. Yeah. Our shared experience is just that. Yeah. That we are sharing this planet together. There you go. And being able to share those stories and see the similarities and differences, but celebrate mm -hmm. both yeah. equally is how we get there. That's how we get there, yeah. Um, every Martin Luther King celebration, we do a four hour program. Mm -hmm. It's called Martin Luther King Speaks, but it's not your normal speech of, I have a dream. Mm -hmm. He has so many more speeches out there. So we run them all, but what we do is we add music of what was going on in that era. So for four hours, it's a beautiful, beautiful program. And so we definitely want people to be able to tune in mm -hmm. to WUFO. If they're not in the actual region, they can go to power965radio.com. Oh, nice. And then as they're doing that, we want them to visit our collection because we had a chance to preserve 61 years of WUFO history. Again, so many incredible moments. Today. Yeah. And if you saw something that you would like to share that you saw on today's show, make sure you're scanning that QR code right there on your screen. Of course, it will take you straight to our Facebook page. And you can also check out on our website. That's WKBW.com forward slash AM dash Buffalo. But it's easy enough to just Google AM Buffalo. And have a good day.